too. What's up, everybody? It's Painkiller Already, episode 15, based on a true story. Tonight we have one of the most anticipated guests in Painkiller history. <laughs> Who do we have today? Uh, <laughs> thanks for the intro, Wings. Uh, this is Mike, but most of you will probably know me as Onslaught because uh, that's my Xbox Live gamer tag. <laughs> so, he likes so, spicy that's my intro. Great. That's it. Check this out. Oh, check this yeah. out. So um, I have had like hundreds of people say, get Onslaught on the podcast, get Onslaught on the podcast. A ton of people have been saying that they want Onslaught on the podcast. So um, <laughs> I talked to T. Martin today, our friend, your friend, T. Martin, right? Onslaught. He's your friend, Trevor? Yeah. He goes, did yeah, you get yeah. a vet for the podcast? I'm like, ah, uh, not yet. Onslaught's filling in. He goes, oh, I've been looking forward for a vet. That's cool, I'm too, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, too, <laughs> Thanks, I guess. Thanks, I, I appreciate it, bro. Thank you for the support. <laughs> okay. yeah. So there you go. Uh, I heavily anticipated, except by the people that know him best. Yeah, nice. I guess. Oh, well, speaking about the veterans thing, I do have a tanker World War II veteran lined up. World War II? World oh War Two. He is eighty-six years old. Are we getting he trolled a by tank. a great grandfather? Like, it, I think so. <laughs> can you still be yeah. alive? The last vet no, we no, had no. This was is in a, Vietnam. This is a, remember that guy Jazzy sounded Jeff twenty-one. From Xbox? Yeah, yeah. This is his grandfather. He asked his grandfather if he'd do it. Hmm. What? But eighty-six. I'm nervous. Like, how coherent is his grandfather? <laughs> I asked him that. I, I asked him that. I mean, he was a tanker. And I'm, uh, I'm like, is his hearing any good? Because my uncle. Uncle Jerry, he was a uh, artillery guy in Vietnam, and his hearing shot to hell because yeah, that howl was just going off. But uh, he yeah. said he's a very he's a very active, coherent guy. Really? What? That would yeah. be cool. Yeah. I was telling Woody earlier that I've got a guy. Um, he's a friend of my dad's who was in Vietnam, and he's got some really funny stories. Oh my god! Might be blind up sometime. I told Woody Woody one of his stories. It was. Some good stuff. <laughs> it was. But speaking it was. of this, but if he's eighty-six have you guys years been old, up the Black Ops trailers. We should probably keep the flashlight no, talk not. to a minimum. <laughs> I, see yeah, I, I didn't like flashlight talk last week. I was like, "Why are we talking about flashlights?" You didn't like the, if there's anyone on this podcast that I thought had given it a go, it was you, Kyle. Dude, I have no need for a aluminum slash whatever they make those things out of receptacle. Dude, if I, I check don't. your underwear drawer, I'm going to find a vampire-styled fleshlight in there. I'm certain of it. <laughs> I don't wear underwear, buddy. I don't wear underwear, so you just got owned. <laughs> okay. oh. I submit. Yeah, I, I can't, can't come back from that. Yeah. What were you saying about the Black Ops Transformers? Well, if, you, if anybody's kept up with Codverse, um, uh, they, they went. They went behind the scenes of Treyarch, and they talked to the Treyarch's military advisor. The guy's like sixty-eight or seventy, and he's doing like handstand push-ups. I was like, "What the hell?" Damn. <laughs> he, on video, he like does a handstand and starts doing push-ups with him. It's an old man. I love those old guys who are like still in like ridiculous shape and stuff. It's always really funny. When I was a lifeguard, uh, one of the guys that that was also on the, the patrol was a, an ex-navy seal and so all the lifeguards worked out like in the, the last the first and last hour of the day you were allowed to work out we all took advantage of it but this guy would go running on the beach but he wouldn't just run he'd take his towel and slice it through like the top hole on a cinder block put the thing on his back and he ran with a cinder block on his back all the time and sometimes he'd do it in like knee-deep water with a cinder block on his back and he was like 45 badass wow <laughs> yeah what Yep, Badass. that was that was the workout he liked to do. Run through like a, you know knee deep water with a cinder block on his back. Fuck that man! <laughs> like that dude needs to get some video games in his life, and then that was, yeah, <laughs> that was right there. Like he probably has like a genuine like leather back. Like aside from being like tan as shit. Yeah, the towel back there. Well, no, no, the towel didn't protect his back. It was yeah, used still, to hold. Well, that's just retarded. The towel well, was yeah. like he could have used a belt. You know, he just sort it's of just laced it through, through the top. Yeah. yeah. There's so many other things you like. I've got a weight belt. You know, it's like you buy a thing from Walmart. It's like twenty bucks. It's like uh, lead weights you strap around your waist. But it's badass. You know, like I used to carry all my clothes in a um, like a <laughs> hiker's you, backpack. And I was about uh, to say, did you uh, ever tell him about the invention of a backpack? Jan Sport would have helped this world amazingly well. So, so I had like a <laughs> aluminum framed uh, hiker's backpack, like the old school ones. And uh, I used to keep weights like lashed to it that I could work out with during the first and last hour. 
And uh, there was just like a certain kind of pride, like carrying weights around to work. I don't know. He probably <laughs> felt the same thing. <laughs> Dude, I'm the way man too was an ex Navy bad. SEAL. I, I don't yeah. think uh, I don't think his shape was in question. <laughs> no. That man, that man could probably fall down like with just a shirt on his back in like the middle of winter in Alaska and survive. <laughs> I know a guy who could do that. I have a friend who's a um, a SEER instructor. Do you know what that is? S E R E. Not like off the top of my head. Uh, survival, escape, rescue, and it's, evasion, or something yeah, close to yeah, that. Yeah. And basically, what they do is they teach people who are dropped into bad situations in the military. It's, I think they're. I'm not positive. I think he was part of the Air Force, but I'm not certain about it. I'm sure there's 7,000 people of you who are going to correct me about the Air Force thing. <laughs> but, it's um, survival, survival, a re- a survival, invasion, resistance, escape. Okay. He yeah. almost said erection. You guys heard that, right? <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> what he did is he, he taught people to like live off the land until they were rescued. So if you were like an airplane pilot, an uh, Air Force pilot or a Navy pilot, you'd go through his course and he'd teach you, like, whether or not it's okay to drink your urine, how to start a fire with, you know, just crap you find around in the woods, and, uh, you know, how to stay warm and stuff like that. It was pretty cool. He also taught them how to resist torture. You know, like, if you're being waterboarded and stuff like that, that was part of the training that they give you in SEER. Cool. How do you re- – I need to I, I need to see this thing. Like an older bear grills. Wings <laughs> I'd like to know how, how would you resist waterboarding? See, like, I knew this is where you are going to go with this. Wings, I oh. promise you, you will never need to know how to resist waterboarding. <laughs> <laughs> Unless Optic Hex gets a hold of you. <laughs> I can see. I don't you, think like, Optic Hex could like, waterboard whenever, me. Whenever I, like, imagine Optic Nation, I imagine it as an actual nation, like, somewhere in the Middle East. And they're like, <laughs> their own army. I just sitting around one of those There's snipers with bricks like on their doctor. back with towels yeah. doing 360s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're sitting at a long table like Dr. Scopes. Hex is at the end of it petting a cat, and they're plotting kidnapping you. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how I imagine oh. that. Every year, Optic Nation. Oh, did y'all, did everybody here get the memo? This memo? is the Memoranian. This is how this what quick scope is classified on Call of Duty Four. We have set the rules and guidelines right here. <laughs> Just passing that. the papers out. Well, I, I'm lost. What are we talking about? Did someone talk about Optic Hex, the actual nation? Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about that. We're talking about how, how he'd pass out like papers and handouts of what actually qualifies as a quick scope. Uh, they've done that. They've already done that. They like somebody look here, like, look here. Rules yeah, if you snipe predominantly PDF. in any first-person shooter, you're known as a bush wookie. A bush yeah. wookie? Oh, because of the uh, ghillie suit they wear. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. So Snip- hey- snipers kill first-person shooters, dude. They seriously do. I just got off Battlefield. And what should have been you know, a 20, 30-minute defense turned into a three-hour defense because they sat there for the first 60 tickets sniping us. Then when they was running low on tickets, they see four degrees. That sounds like fun to me. Uh, yeah, it sounds like big fun, doesn't it? I don't play <laughs> that game for for reasons like that. It's just too slow paced, man. There's it's just slow like paced when people snipe. It's all it is. If people well, people run, snipes. It's that's like that's like saying Call of Duty's really fun, except for when people use cheap stuff. It's like okay, but every game they do it so. constantly. The thing is. That's it, where it's, there's only two games I can think of that are quick enough, and that's Left 4 Dead and um, Call of Duty. Everything else feels like you're walking in molasses. You know, those two, you are a nimble little, I don't know, gymnast jumping around doing your thing, yeah. and then every other game feels slow by comparison. Yeah, I need just because of the frame rate. Yeah. No, yeah, no, the, the characters move quicker, and I think the characters move quicker because of the frame rate. Like it's enabled, but take for example. Um, Favilla, right? You know where the uh, the A flag is? If you were to walk down that street, not sprint, but walk it, I bet it would take, I don't know, 15 seconds, something like that. If you were to walk a block in real life, it takes like five minutes. <laughs> your, your character is rocking in these games. And, and when you sprint and jump from roof to roof and stuff, they, like they're moving inhumanly fast, and I prefer that to more realistic paces. Yeah, I agree. Especially when you consider like battle gear and weapons, that's what you really got to be thinking, taking into account. Like that guy just jumped from one roof to another, carrying a saw. 
Like, yeah. you know, he's like, yeah. I'm not messing around. <laughs> <laughs> Got an extra 120 pounds on him. Yeah. You know, I was, I was waiting for the next Call of Duty to come out, and instead of having the noob tube attached to the rifle, the noob tube is a primary weapon you can carry around in your hand, and then the rifle's optional. Oh, man. Like a bumper. <laughs> Like a that's all. Yeah. That's all. That's already the way it's used, though. I mean, people don't <laughs> shoot their gun and switch right to the grenade launchers like it's a primary. I I don't like noob tubes, man. They're terrible. I don't like them either. They they ruin the game. I mean, like you, you people get flat to battlefield, but their explosives are on par. The grenade will kill you if it's at, if it's in, like generally in the same area as you. But how often have you been killed by a grenade on battlefield? And, uh, yeah, grenades, noob tubes, you know. They, it's, an, it's situational. And and oftentimes, if you are killed by it, he probably could have chose bullets, too. You know, because he had you. He saw you. He got that nade next to you. It's uh, it's better that way, I think. I'll tell you the coolest thing about uh, Call of Duty is that magical one-man army backpack that has everything in it. <laughs> it's got everything in there. Like, like what, you want a sniper? I got one in here. Okay. You want a submachine gun too? Yeah, I, I guess that's think, I was thinking about I was thinking about a fix for a scavenger. Maybe scavenger only could pick up what the guy had. That's how COD four worked. Like like if he like you, you had claymores and he had claymores, you can pick his one claymore up if he didn't use it. Yeah, that would be if good. Had, in in COD four it was similar. Like if you had a um an AK and you walked over someone who had one, then you'd pick up some extra bullets. Yeah. See, I, this is what I, mean, I like I don't like the unlimited claymores. Like COD four you had two clays. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, good deal. I got two clays. And when you're fight when you're going against somebody who had claymores, you'd like run into his one claymore, maybe it'd kill you. You'd be like, all right, I'm going back to get that motherfucker. Worst case scenario, his other clay gets me. Maybe you go back and the other clay gets you. You're like, all right, he's done for now. He didn't have any more clays. But Modern Warfare 2, it's like, <laughs> God, I hope he doesn't put the clay in a different spot this time. <laughs> I'm going to be so fucked. Yeah, in Modern Warfare 2, like in COD 4, let's say you're a uh, second floor library on overgrown. Well, you know, you, you just put a claymore on both of those entrances. And if anyone dies, scavenge, replace. On um, uh, COD 4, it was like, well, either one entrance is open or the second you get a kill, you know you're not safe anymore. You know, th there's, an en there's an easy way to get to you. So, uh, yeah, it's better. These shouldn't be replaceable claymores, but it's the explosives that really get me more than the claymores. Yeah, but they're, but they're also, fine. I mean, they're also giving up, I mean, whatever other blue perk you could be using, you know. I mean, they're not using sleight of hand or, or one-man army or bling or anything else. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, I don't know. It's each his own, I guess. Yeah. I, here's something else. Maybe they should lower the hitbox back. Everybody liked COD 4 and thought COD 4 was this great thing. I think a lot of it has to do with the smaller hitbox and the less emphasis on explosives. Yeah, I'm on that second part. Huge. You know, although I will say there because was frag times no, three. Some of the maps. It like was frag, but oh. frags aren't as bad as grenade launchers. They're yep. not. Yeah, Agreed. not even yep. close, dude. Yep, that's true. That's it true. took skill to, to throw a frag grenade. Like, people are like, oh, you just looked up in there and threw it. But, like, I mean, if you just look up in the air and throw a grenade, it's it lands 20 feet in front of you. All right, so that's not really the case. They're throwing them in the direction of where your spawn point is generally. And as far as, like, close-range grenades, like, you know, that guy, when there's a guy, like, right in front of you in a building and you're, like, throwing the frag in to get him, you know, you had to cook that thing just right so it would blow up. It would, like, ding off the side of the wall, bounce in, land in his lap, and blow up. And, but these yeah. the fucking Simtex in Modern Warfare 2 is the newbiest thing of all time. It's just as powerful, but you don't even have to cook it. It cooks itself. It's just like, all right. Point, put the put the reticle on the window and tap the right bumper. I, I disagree slightly. Like um, the fact that you can't cook it works in both ways for me. For example, I can't throw it as far because it'll explode before it hits the ground. That's and, true. Um, also, it gives the guy a chance to escape a lot if he's up close. Whereas you know, like if I know the guy's camping in a window and he's waiting for me to be the impatient one that walks in front of it, I can cook a nade and he doesn't have a chance to escape. Whereas with the Semtex, I can't do that. The real reason I run Semtexes all the time is because it's pretty common for me, like say a guy's capping uh, Alpha on Afghan, I'll approach it with a, a Semtex in my hand, and if someone else gets there first, I can put it back in my pocket. Where with the frag, you can't do that, and that's a pretty big deal, deal to me. Yeah, I love that. The fact that I love the frag can't, can't kill little poodles or kittens or anything like that. 
That's true. Yeah, frag's a tough nade to use, but I, I I use the frag a lot, typically on like favela or buildings where you want to get the nade, you know, deep into a building or something, or use the wall, bounce it off walls, and it's pretty effective there. Yeah. You know what I've started using a lot, and you guys give me a hard time? Commando Pro. And uh, I don't knife anyone. Anyone who plays with me knows that, like, if I knife you, it's because I walked up behind you and you didn't stop looking out of the window. That's about the only time I rock the knife. And, um, but Commando Pro, where I can jump off roofs, like in Favela, it's a big deal. I've been trying to get, you know, some more, like, rush crazy games. And uh, being able to jump off roofs and pursue people that way is nice. Yeah. It, it, yeah you did I like, have somebody... I like on Quarry as well. Yeah, Quarry's another one. You know, if they split off the perk, you know, where the knife distance was one and the no fall damage was another one, I'd run the no fall damage and uh, you know, play around with that because it's kind of cool. I I'll tell you, like, like the commando just bugs the shit of me as well. But I I, I don't have a problem with it when it's like with a riot, with a riot shield. I was watching an X Gals video. Did you guys see his uh, com- his riot shield video he put up from on Favela? No, yeah, 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 yeah. He's I doing his, one uh, that where the glitch. Or yeah, he does his flash knifing, which is like like he, he does a button combination so that it basically takes the de- the delay away that you've normally got when you're swinging a riot shield, and it just like bam, bam, and it's like a one two punch with this thing. He goes straight to the pave low at one point, like goes straight through his harrier and gets the pave low, just whacking people with the riot shield. It's 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 a really good video. So He's great. At, is it? You know, hit the guy, change weapons, hit the guy. Is that the button? It's combo? circle, circle, right bumper Y. We gotta grab a controller. We're sitting all over here. Let's see. It's yeah, it's circle, right bumper Y with the throwing knife equipped. Which button is circle? They're all freaking circles. Oh, B. No, the melee button. Yeah, B. So it's melee. And would you say Y and then melee again? Right. Circle, uh, B, right bumper Y. But you don't really tap the right bumper. You hold the right bumper. Oh. Because you've got a knife equipped, a throwing knife. Got it. Do it with the Semtex as well. Yeah. But the throwing knife is better because you can pick it back up because you need it. Yeah. Sure. And if you need to, you can throw it at somebody. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty interesting the way he does it, and he never really messes it up. I've never seen him mess it up. Maybe I just wasn't paying close enough attention, but he gets it right every time, and he be- he he's really good at it. Yeah, sometimes yeah. those button combos. I, you sure it ain't on high rise? No, he just put no. it up on. It's it's yeah. a duel with him and Blame Truth. He just has put it up like a day or two ago. It's yeah, a it domination on Favela. He goes ninety and eleven, uh, and he loses. It's the worst best part. <laughs> Hmm. What uh, what what would you guys consider to be the most overpowered perk in the game? Like the most annoying is obviously Commando and Danger Close. Would you say there's one perk that just bar none is more overpowered than any of the others? Stopping power. Stopping power. <laughs> yeah, I guess really? so. I posted on my recent my last Machinima post. I posted up, um, and I think it's Ninja Pro because there there are guns that you can use that are still one shot kills and you don't need stopping power with them. I mean, you can put a silencer on a FAMAS without stopping power and get a one shot kill if you have decent accuracy. True. So, I mean, Ninja that, Pro, you know, you know it's something Ninja that Ninja Pro would be there. Yeah. Because it's yeah. I mean, it helps you constantly. You don't have to do anything special to for it to work. I mean, the only I don't know, the only thing I guess using a headset or not is the the biggest thing that kind of makes it most beneficial, but yeah. Um, I posted that with Machinima, and I had a bunch of people kind of hating on it, saying, like you guys said, saying stopping power is, saying danger close in commando just because they're so annoying. But those perks also, you I mean, they only come into play like at specific instances. Like you can yeah. you can counteract those throughout your gameplay if you realize what's going on. It's funny, though, because I've convinced myself that sound whoring is a skill I've developed, not an overpowered piece of equipment I bought. <laughs> No, nah. but yeah, yeah, you can do well without stopping power. If you run hardline or lightweight, you can still get great games. Yeah, I've started running yeah, I mean, an there's... RPD with marathon lightweight, and that class is insanely fun. Like I have several classes now that I think about it that are, that don't have stopping power, and like I remember there was a point where I ran nothing but the marathon lightweight um, forever. Like back when the models were uh, still like oh, overpowered, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. I don't yeah. even I, I didn't have a class with stopping power on it. It was all marathon lightweight, just so I could yeah, get those shotguns up a little faster. 
it just re- and you didn't need it on those things. Man, I miss yeah. those days. My cousin <laughs> has the game, and they play split screen like System Link over at his house. And he doesn't ha- he doesn't have Xbox Live, so it's never been updated. So so I, I get on there. I'm like, yeah, let me try out these uh, Akimbo models, see if they're any good. And I just rate the shit out of all of them. None of them have none of those none of the, those guys have ranked up high enough to unlock them. This is great. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to Love. chime in and say I'm glad that uh, glad that they're going, Kyle. I'm sorry. Yeah, oh for sure. Yeah. It, it, the trouble is, search. when you die and it feels like it's not your fault, it's terrible. I mean, people here in this podcast have heard me say that before. But those models, you know, there was just nothing you could do. There's no way to counter that. You were just insta dead. Yeah, if they saw you and they were within, you know, fifty feet, fifty just, yards oh. almost. Yeah. <laughs> it was just, it was, and I mean, it was still realistic. Like, I mean, somebody shoots shoots you with two twelve gauges. You know, it's not dead. about realism, right? I mean, it's, a Everybody real shotgun will kill you within a hundred yards. To me, it's about yeah, balance. No. You know, like the, the insta kill is offset by range. All right, you want to go? You want to go realistic? No, anybody no, with body armor will not die to a shotgun. Go realistic. That's true. Show, show me a heart a heartbeat sensor in real life. Yeah, I want to find one of those because I need Show me that. Hunting. Show me some realism on that. I don't know what that's supposed to be. God, I hate the heartbeat sensor. <laughs> <laughs> I remember playing the Battlefield Bad Company 2 uh, uh, single player, and at one point they're like, maybe we should call in for uh, call in to like, you know, headquarters or something. And the guy's like, headquarters? They'll just send in a bunch of special special forces pussies with heartbeat sensors and shit. Nah, we're gonna fix. We're gonna do this ourselves. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh man. So I hate- I, I posted up a thread on topicgaming.com and uh, I told people to give me painkiller already topics. And this one guy, Soundwave CTR, had a different topic for all of us, but not for onslaught. So we'll hear what he says. But for wings. He wants to know what your favorite uh, firearm is in your collection and why. My favorite firearm in my collection. Well, there's a couple different variations there. I could go the one I use the most, or I can go the one with sentimental value, or the, the one with the lineage. Which one do you want to hear? The one that's the least boring. I go, go sentimental. <laughs> give us, a, give us a, an exciting story about it. Oh, well, it's in the middle thinking. of my Mosin Nagant. Oh. I've got a uh, I've got an 18, uh, 1891 30 Mosin which was picked up in Berlin by my uh, great-grandfather and uh, has been handed down to me through generations. Um, That's awesome. For people that don't know, the Mosin Nagant was a Russian uh, rifle bolt action used in World War II and maybe World War One. It was you? World War One as well. Mm-hmm. Is 1891 was the years of, years of year of his conception. <laughs> is this a, is this a gun that you fire, or is it just more kind of display? Oh, it, 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 it's 100 percent working condition. Do you take it out and shoot it though? Yeah, would you, you wouldn't. You would do that. Wow. Yeah. Why well, yeah. not? I don't know. I'm, I don't know a ton about guns, but I would. I would think if I had something kind of rare like that, I wouldn't. I don't know. That's just me. It's but. not. It's not a rare gun. That, yeah. It's by no means a rare gun. It's a sentimental gun. Most of the guns are one of the most, you know, mass-produced weapons of all time. Same. I've got one. How uh, they, how old is it? Um, eighteen ninety-one. This eighteen. No, this one was made in eighteen ninety-one. That's the year of their conception. That's the model. Eighteen ninety-one thirty. So guns are conceived. <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. Right? <laughs> Wings, I know it's I sentimental think, and everything, I but dude, mean, it was just made. I think you mean Inception. I'm a little drunk. Yeah, Inception. <laughs> yeah. It's a beautiful love yeah. child. The, this one was made in uh, 1943, in the one I have. Uh, that's, oh, I got that's you. when it came off the factory. Mine was made in like 42 or 43 too, and the war ended in what? 45. 45. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm you know. <laughs> It, look, if a gun was made in if 42, I think it was, that thing saw action, right? There was someone yeah. who held my gun, scared for his life oh. in World War II. S- someone died with my gun in their hand. <laughs> yeah, right, because oh. your grandfather picked it up. <laughs> yeah. But um, back back in the day, you could you could pick up souvenirs like German Lugers and things of that nature. He had a German Luger, which he was going to give to me, but it got stole. Oh. So I've always the, wanted that German Luger. The next question, oh, uh does anyone else want to answer the same question? Favorite gun and why? Um, I, I got I will. four. <laughs> <laughs> I like my uh, I like my Benelli Super Sport shotgun. Oh my god! It is. Uh, it's. How much, um, how much do they cost, Scrooge McDuck? Benelli is about four or five thousand dollars. 
It's 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 Let's a pretty see. it's a pretty expensive shotgun. <laughs> it's got the you know it's got the cryogenically treated barrel and the carbon does. fiber stock and you know you, you, you didn't get the one with the petri- the the uh, petrified wood stock. Come on now. That's my Kragoff <laughs> shotgun. That's a whole different story, my friend. You could buy a house like, for what that guy. <laughs> that sounds guy like costs. you're describing like a, a high end car or something. Like yeah, the get wood on, trim, all that carbon fiber, you know, aluminum. Get, get on a get on Google real quick and like search Kragoff shotguns. Those are some beautiful. Those are those things are pieces of art. But I like my Benelli better because it's you can I I, I don't. I'm not afraid to take it out and go shoot with it. Dude, the Benelli's, man, they have these guys on YouTube. They're obviously professional shooters. And they throw the clay pigeons there. They hold the gun backwards and shoot it over their shoulder. I can do that. It's not as hard. Once, really? Once you've shot as many times as, as those guys have and as I have, like, it's it's not that hard. I've shot thousands and thousands of rounds through that Benelli. I, if I were to take a shotgun and point it over my shoulder, there's no telling what it would hit. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have trouble Dude. hitting a car. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got I've got my own um, five stand sporting clay range, and uh, so it's like the automated machines that that you know you push a button and they throw like different patterns from five different uh, Wait, skeet machines. A five clay sporting range. It's 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 called a five stand sporting clay range. It, it's uh, you stand in five and different positions. You've got. Woody, a, how, long, a, how long did it take us to convince this guy to buy a new computer? I know, my gosh. Is that next to the vault of gold coins you swim in? I got a good deal on it, okay? I got a really good deal on it. Like uh-huh. This other guy had bought it. I got it off of him. It was like, I can't even tell how much. I, I can't say how much it costs because people like, oh, that's the good deal, huh? But it's a good yeah, go, I get it Go ahead and tell deal. us. No, it, it was. How many digits is it? Is it about four? I don't know what these things would cost. It's it's uh it's five digits. I think it's six five digits. digits. So it's nothing to mess around with. Okay. Oh, that's it's, fucked up. Yeah. X College died out to martyrdom on like a fifteen kills. <laughs> hey, 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 show. hey. We want your full attention on the podcast here, man. Don't talk about that. <laughs> but it's 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 five different automated skeet machines that, that are like I don't know how many things they hold like two hundred and fifty skeet a piece and they'll throw them like eighty miles an hour and I don't know, it's it's, it's really cool I got, and so I got a question I can for sit you. There now. I would sit there all day and like push the button with my big toe because mm-hmm. I'd be out there barefooted and I'd just be like shooting, like doing trick shots and stuff. And you could, like literally for hours, like I like, got a headache or whatever. It's expensive to do that too. Like the, the shotgun shells themselves are pricey. Just I gotta, when, you, when, you buy, when you buy them in bulk, it's, uh, it's cheaper. Pretty cheap. Maybe I've just never yeah. done that. Shoot, low brass ain't yeah. that damn expensive. Shotgun <laughs> shells are cheap as shit right now compared to center Wait. fire ammo. Oh, well, I maybe remember. I don't know. Seems like back. Yeah. Seems like back then we were getting them for like right at three dollars a box, three dollars for twenty five shells. Yeah, that's cheap yeah. as shit. I mean, I just yeah. paid. I paid fifty dollars the other day for twenty rounds of three hundred win mag. Okay, okay. Hey, onslaught. Well, do you yeah, have a favorite know, gun? Uh, no, I do. I know nothing about guns, but I do. Yes, you do have a favorite. Just, <laughs> yeah, the uh, the M sixteen stocking power. <laughs> um, I, I, I am. I'm I got a question at, for Kyle. Uh, actually, it would be the Famas, but I'm looking at this Kragoff K80, and that I have to say that is a sexy looking gun here. Is it spelled with a C or great, K? I just it's with a K, dude. It is. It's ridiculous. It looks like so a Kyle. hybrid. Like it's not a real modern looking gun. It's just crazy. Yeah. What's, what's the up? most you've ever spent on a right on a weapon? Um, it was it was that Kragoff shotgun, which is the number. I, I'd honestly rather not say. <laughs> I'll tell you mine if I, you tell me yours. Uh, it's a it's a twenty thousand dollars shotgun. How do you spell yeah, you Kragoff? K R E I G. I pulled I pulled money out of my four hundred one k to buy gosh. a sixty eight hundred dollar weapon. It is a Barrett M ninety five bolt action rifle. That's uh, a model ninety five. And I've shot it a total of ten times in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> my most expensive because the bullet gun. the bullets cost fucking uh bullets cost around fifty dollars for ten. Oh Jesus! My most expensive gun cost five hundred bucks, and uh, it came with a scope. <laughs> and, and I don't really have a sentimental one either. I kind of like the Mosin the Gaunt because it's been places, but uh, it's not like I'm deeply attached to it or anything. Like my favorite gun in my collection. Would be my Waffen Death Head Car 98. 
See, that's why that's why I gave you all a few different things. Like my favorite gun, in my collection, my car ninety eight Waffen Death Head, because it still has the Nazi lion on it. It still has the Waffen Death Head. It still has the swastika on it. None of that was defaced. Normally, when countries would capture rifles, they would deface the rifle. They would tear the hood off the car ninety eight. They would they would scratch out the lion emblem. They would scratch out the swastika. They would scratch out the Death Head. Only came on certain car ninety eights that the Waffen themselves used that protected Hitler. I found one of these in a box of car 98s at the gun store on 17 South here in Myrtle Beach. And he didn't know what he had. That weapon's probably worth a couple thousand dollars. I got it for 160 <laughs> Nice. Nice. It came in bulk. All right. So the next one, this one was to Kyle. Best party story ever. And before <laughs> Kyle goes, sometimes I find these questions hard to, like, perform, you know? I'm glad these questions aren't to me. <laughs> um. <laughs> like, well... I played Mario Party one time after a D&D game. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, and I got, I was so wasted. Wings is like, I mean, he's like, all right. Wings is like, all right, this is the party. It was hot. It was me, Hutch, and Woody. And Woody. We were all in this Xbox party. It was great. And, <laughs> On uh, shit, man. 1v1s. Um, best one ever. Um, Probably in Athens, Georgia, which is like a, one of the biggest party towns in the country, for those of you who know. And uh, it's a pretty pretty good night. I got laid twice, and um, a girl that I that a girl who had like turned me down actually shit her pants that night, and everybody knew it because she was like <laughs> laying there like shit panted, and it was like <laughs> it was like ha ha, see what happens. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So you got like twice. I'm guessing that meaning that means two different women, right? Yeah, that would be two different. They, yes. So, yeah, no, that's where you're one <laughs> one woman, one man. That's my guess. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> no. no, wait a minute. Were you there, Woody? Was that you? <laughs> I was the guy. Um, god damn it. <laughs> oh. I remember when I I came home from college my freshman year. We. Uh, we like made up flyers for a party because my parents were out of town and we went to the stores on the boardwalk and had them distribute them to anyone they thought was good looking like guys, girls. We just wanted a party filled with like, you know, people. So we're like, yeah, you know, look, if they're between like 17 and 25 and they look hot, then give them one of these flyers. And they all came to my house. We had like 300 people there and there was a lot of vomit and broken things. But, uh, you know, it was kind of cool until my parents came home. Nice. I'm glad y'all didn't ask me this question because I was dead serious. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, party? What is that? Party story? I've never, been, I've never been to a party with like alcohol and shit. When I was growing yeah. up, the idea of a good time around here was sitting in the field drinking beer. I don't drink beer. So I had never did that. So you guys went cow tipping wings. We do that in North yeah, Carolina. I'm sure they did, but that involved beer too. Anything that involved beer, I try to stay away from. <laughs> cow tipping is not true. There's Not no, true, but, it, yeah. you don't actually tip cows. It, so <laughs> here, I'm going to let everyone in on a secret, everyone who listens to this podcast. Cow tipping isn't real. They don't do it. What they do is they say they're going to go cow tipping. The country guys drive you out to this stinky cow pasture, and then they drive away while you're out yeah. there by it's yourself. It's like snipe hunting. Have you heard it's of like snipe, snipe hunting. hunting. I, go ahead. Search YouTube <laughs> for some video of somebody cow tipping, and you won't find yeah. it. It doesn't You're actually happen. Sleeping the, cows when you get out in the pasture. I tried to go cow tipping. So I, I was off-roading in Crozet, Virginia, if anyone's been there. And uh, where you sleep there is this, like, cow pasture kind of thing. You put your tent up and you do your thing. And um, uh, they were like, Woody, you know, go tip a cow. They got to the point where they offered me $100 if I could touch a cow. I can't touch a cow. I would, like, not look at them, walk all sneaky, and then dart in their direction <laughs> And I, I couldn't even lay a hand on the cow. I was going to ride it if I could, but uh, it wasn't happening. The cows were in complete control. Cow I tipping is not a reasonable thing. I the cow anyway. Yeah, I had this notion, like, you know, four guys would have throw their shoulder in it linebacker style. No. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Dude, how it works how's, at how's all. Cows are, are heavy more, animals. <laughs> they're more agile than humans, too. I'm telling you. You go out. Yeah. And, if you cows listen to this really podcast... Much. Go Hug ahead, cow. go out there and try and uh, hug a cow. Chase a cow. Yeah, a... go hug a cow. I, I, Put I, your I, arms around I his neck. 
I can touch cows. I've touched cows before. They come up to you by the fence. But if it's on their terms, it's like swimming with dolphins. You know, what happens is what the dolphin wants to happen. Yeah, they're not going to want anything to do with you. You I've got to be around them a little bit. (laughs) I've got a couple, I got a couple hundred cows and like uh, every, you know, about like every six months we, uh, we catch the cows and we sell them and they are slaughtered. But that's, but that's not the point. Um, We like, you put them in a pen and they don't like it in the pen because there's no way out of the pen except for onto a trailer. And like, they start freaking out in there and you're in there like, like I won't go in there without a stick and like, like a heavy enough stick that I feel like if I hit him in the head, it's going to do something. And, um, but yeah, they'll, they're, they're fast. They're agile. Um, yeah. and, and like I've, I've hit them with my bare hand before, like, you know, like try to make them move a little bit far faster. That thing is like nothing but solid muscle. Okay. <laughs> like it's, it's like, like a, a calf and I'm talking about like a six month old, six to eight month old calf. That thing weighs like 600 pounds. Like he's <laughs> ripped he up. Is a, he is stronger than any human on the planet that there has ever been. He would destroy Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's a beast, son. Six months old, like you don't fuck with those. Things. <laughs> I, I, I've been talking about this before. Y'all laughed at me. Like pigs, pigs are known to be fat creatures. Hell, the fuck no. They're fast as fuck and they're strong as shit. I've seen a pig jump a fence because we took his baby pig away from it. <laughs> you know what? I've never talked about my diet, dude. This should be the cool story, bro. What what puts what what transitions you into that talking about? I don't know, cats? but I like the transition because Wings is talking about stealing babies from pigs. <laughs> That's where I was going. Baby pigs. Hey, I got a cool story of the week, bro. This week too. Really? Well, let me do the diet yeah. one. So, um, I work in the IT industry, and the IT industry has a lot of Indians in it. The uh, the kind from Asia, no. India. It's true. Not the uh, not really? the Native American Indians. So, um, and a lot of these guys are vegetarians. So we, I would go out to lunch, you know, we just whatever, I'll run out to the lunch or whatever, and uh, they would not eat any you know, meat products, and I would. And they'd start there and sort of talk about the morality of eating meat products. And uh, you, you hear the same thing, like same thing, like day after day for year after year. And uh, after a while, you're like, you know, it's kind of hard to justify this eating of meat. And I talked about how I thought bullfighting was wrong, how, you know, like, look, they're going out there, they're killing the thing for sport. It's not quite the same. As like fully utilizing an animal, you know, getting leather from its skin, getting the food from its meat and, and doing the whole thing. It's just killing for sport. It didn't seem like as good a thing. And he's like, the cow doesn't care. The cow had, does not pass judgment on whether or not uh, it was a just killing or not. He just knows he's dead. And, or the bull, I guess, in this case. And I thought about it and um, I came up with a compromise, a compromised diet. And I've been doing it for a long time. I bet it's like seven years now. It's my own variety. I'm a revenge-based vegetarian. So, <laughs> I, yeah, I only eat meat that would eat me given the opportunity. So, like, um, what, he's got like frozen lion in his refrigerator. Oh, it narrows it down quite a bit. No, it doesn't no. that much. Like, you know, for like example, a pig would eat you. I eat pig. Yeah, pigs are mean and nasty. You think of like. Um, uh, Charlotte, you know, is Charlotte the pig or the spider? Right, I forget. Wait, 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 wait. Right, well, but that's not what pigs are really like. a real gangster in real life. He's ready to play yeah, well, he... What's that? Now, are we talking about animals that would eat you given the chance? Given or the chance. Or if they were starving. Right. If so, you were, like, dead. For example, take a goldfish, right? You think his goldfish oh. is a fairly tame animal. But if a goldfish was, say, 150 feet long, it would gobble you up in a heartbeat. <laughs> what? Yes. Goldfish if eat... it's 150 feet long, it'd eat a boat. Yeah. <laughs> goldfish is a fluke, Woody. No, 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 no. Goldfish, will they eat, eat, they eat insects primarily, right? Like, they're, they don't just eat algae. So, um, uh, or, or take something else, like, uh, I don't so know if, if you know what a trigger insect, fish is. if you're a goldfish would eat you. Exactly. This is a retarded diet plan. <laughs> no, no, no. It is this. very, very retarded. I it's don't not know retarded at all. I think I just need to explain the logic a little further. Okay. Here's <laughs> the logic. If you're a Tyrannosaurus Rex, you're lunch. If you're a Brachiosaurus, is... you're good. No, so yeah, let's keep going on YouTube. this. Right. Now, uh, uh, skip the goldfish. Take a... Um, uh, rabbit. A sw- okay, I don't eat rabbit. Take, take a cow. I think take if a, a cow, Woody. Okay, I don't eat cows. Don't eat them because, you know, cows sort of do have the opportunity. They're, the size and the strength that a cow has is probably comparable to, like, what a tiger rocks with. But they just have a different demeanor. If you took a cow and made him 150 feet tall, he still wouldn't eat me. Cows don't eat me, so I don't eat cows. But um, 
Uh, take I got some, one for you. Take a nasty one. I'll eat any bird. I have never met a bird in my entire life that I oh, like. Bird. If you think birds are nice, go find a swan and pet it. See how that works out for you. Go, you know, go, go take a goose and see if he'd like you to pat him on his head gently. That goose will bust him. <laughs> He's going to come for you. So, therefore, so, so I'll eat birds. Chicken's pretty much the only thing, right? Chicken, I, I would imagine, is I your, eat chickens your all the time. If you include turkey, okay. you know, I eat, like poultry, I probably eat it like 355 days a year. It's no, hard no, no, for... No. Now, chicken won't fuck with you, though. What? Dude, all right. Yeah, no. but I don't know. I, I don't know. Chickens. I can walk out there and pick any one of them up. And they will not hit me at all. That's because you've never met a chicken that's 250 feet tall. Given the opportunity, a chicken would <laughs> bust your ass. Well, that's that's where, that's where your idea fails. It no. Can't. I have ra- all right, let me just say this because I'm going to, like, shoot Wings, that idea down immediately. I have raised more chickens than Wings has ever seen. They are evil, lethal, dangerous animals. And given the chance, they, if you were, like, laying there paralyzed, they would peck your eyes out within an hour. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't eat you though. A chicken would they wouldn't eat you. Animals. No, they eat each other. Like, if a chicken is like in there dead with the rest of them, you come in there, it looks like they were eating a Snickers bar. There's like <laughs> chunks taken out of him everywhere. They'll eat half the chicken before you can get to it. Woody, I, I could see you eating vulture. I can't see you eating mythical 250 pound chickens. But no, no, because the the diet measures their intent, not uh, their ability. So you know, you know if some if hot there sauce, was... I'd eat a mythical chicken. <laughs> So, yeah, so, like you know, some fire I'm trying to think. that would solve world hunger. Imagine those 250 pound chickens. That would be awesome. <laughs> take a, um, or I guess it's an ostrich. Like I don't actually eat them, but take like a a lightning bug or something, or a gnat. They don't eat wait, people, wait. but only because they can't. If you were to make them big enough, then they would gladly gobble you up. Therefore. <laughs> They're, they're, you know, if they were this good eating, the I would be. Diet yeah, I, just, I can't, I can't say that. And the you worst can, part then, is you don't eat steak, apparently. All right, here's the question. Right. What about animals that will kill you that won't eat you? For example, an elephant. I would um, eat an elephant. I think I measure his intent there. And if he's down for killing me, <laughs> then I'm just, down for killing him. It's really so, about the purity right. of their hearts. But this oh. is what's hard. No, it's only you. Tar- I must not a- have explained it right yet. <laughs> you did. <laughs> what about bull? What about a raging bull, Woody? Would you eat that? You know, everyone throws what out the bull intent? example, but raging bulls are not what they sell at the store. If right, there was got, okay, a genuine this, raging bill, but who would they don't bull? sell two hundred and fifty pound chickens either. But I got one for you, Woody. I'm measuring the the heart of the animal that I'm eating, the soul. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough, Art. I got you. What about a centaur? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna lump them in with people, and say that uh, you know, there's sort of an innocent until proven guilty thing in there. Generally, so people don't eat, eat me. You're a cannibal. Are you? I'm serious? not. No, no. A, I went the other way. What about that. a minotaur? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Woody, guess what? Uh-huh. If it, me and you were in the seer class and it became me to you, who gets to eat tonight? I'm eating Wait, tonight. <laughs> all right, all right. Wait, wait, wait. In that situation, I'd eat you. Huh, take that, because I've measured your heart. Say, I've oh, measured the purity of your heart. The instant you're ready to eat us, me, you're, you're food. If the four of us are on a mountain, <laughs> if, if the four of us are on a, on a plane crash on a, on a snowy mountain, who gets eaten first? That's an onslaught. Yeah. Hey, look, how are you going to pick me? I'm like six oh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm athletic. All right. I just probably... All right. I'm gonna go wait, wait. I'm how tall are you, Onslaught? Ways. I know you play basketball. How tall are you? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm six foot, about 185 pounds. Pretty, I mean, Perfect. I'm pretty muscular, yeah. pretty athletic. You sound, yeah. you know, you're sounding tasty. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Here's the one. Bring it, Woody. Bring it, Woody. My body is fat. You don't want none of this Here's, onslaught. We need the fat to survive. <laughs> this is why we see. Wings. I will survive longer than y'all because I have the fat to insulate me. <laughs> no, no, no. This is why we eat wings first. One, he's got the bum leg. He's gonna have a hard time getting down the mountain. <laughs> Two, there's a lot. Into the week. Two, there's a lot of him to eat, okay? Mm-hmm. Three, he, if we kill Onslaught and eat him, Wings is going to take, Wings is going <laughs> to eat like half of him the first day. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> like, we, like whoa, whoa, we have whoa. a choice to make here, right? Are we going to kill Onslaught and Kyle or just Wings? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. Maybe Kyle and I should just take out everybody and be done with it. And by that oh, time, we've... Yeah. We, we, We've lasted off Wings and Woody for, I don't know, a good a few weeks, and uh, then our, our, our plane arrives, and we're good to go. Onslaught, so you're thinking of me as this elderly guy. We need to meet up. 
We need to yeah, meet up. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you need to see what these videos of the lifeguard pictures. <laughs> I, I've seen those pictures are like from the what from the forties, Woody? Is that how old the you 20s, are? The twenties, I believe. Yeah, <laughs> is that right? You know, he was talking. He was talking about that old gun he has. What's funny is that gun is not as old as he is. <laughs> I was told. Did, did, you did, you your, did you have your pinstripe lifeguard uniform off in those pictures? <laughs> I was actually coaching onslaught on how not to get his ass kicked in oh, this, you know, YouTube it? battle this morning. You know, I, I, I put up that video from uh, from less than a day ago, and somebody wrote uh, that onslaught was begging for help from his daddy, and that's why I shot the guy through the airplane, <laughs> and it got 181 upvotes. I was like, I got. <laughs> I that's gotta help ridiculous. this kid talk back. He's he's that's losing insane. this battle. It's too lopsided. So I fueled yeah. him with this. Go with the age thing, and then here it's working for him. So nicely done, onslaught. Yeah, I mean, I I could I could do that stuff. I I was done. I thought I had pretty much won the battle. So I was gonna call a truce there. But it looks like it's it's coming back up. His head is kind of slowly rearing. So I'm gonna know. have to. I think uh, the uh, I think the community still sees you as my son, which is fair enough yeah. because of the you know the thing I did with your mom. Yeah, I think but oh! you just snort. Yeah, all right, Woody. Don't don't even start. We're not going to talk about your Call of Duty gameplay and why you enjoy Last Stand so much because it's the most comfortable position for you at your age. So, so we're going to stay away from that. Uh, wow. Save that for another day. Yeah, I've put down the Red Dot site. Now I'm rocking the Walker as my attachment. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I hit Woody with some little one-liners earlier. Today. Yeah, they were good. That that was a variation of his. Hey, so a Soundwave has another question, and it's to me, and it's funny given the line of conversation. Woody, being the eldest of the three, thank you, Jackass. Um, if you could go back and change one thing in your life, what would it be? And uh, I don't know. It's tough. Like I, sometimes I think about um, if I'd gotten better grades in high school. So I'm not a dumb guy. I, I could have pulled some pretty good grades and gone to a pretty elite school straight out of high school, I think, if uh, I put any attention to it. In high school, I was the biggest slacker you could possibly imagine. You know, With the exception of the drug thing, I would never do homework. I would never study. I'd never touch a book. Um, I'd miss my full you know, 18 days of class every year. And, um, you know, I considered it almost optional and just, you know, almost like my duty to miss the maximum amount of classes you, or uh, days you could miss without uh, uh, getting kicked out of school. And then the tardy thing. Oh, my gosh. You know, if I was one minute late to school, they put you in detention. So uh, I would I realized, though, that if you were like three and a half hours late for school, you also got put in detention. So if I ran late at all, I'd be like, screw this. And drive somewhere else, hang out at the beach, do whatever, go get some breakfast, and then roll into school like four classes late. And uh, and that was me. And I only got into college really because I was a pretty good swimmer and they overlooked the uh, the grades thing there to get me in. So I wonder, like, how would life have turned out differently if I had applied myself earlier and, uh, and gone to a better school? Because I think I could have. And... Um, uh, but then on the other hand, I'm pretty happy with where my life is now. You know, if I had gone to a different school, I wouldn't have met my wife. And my wife is a keeper. Uh, and, and then, you know, my kids would be different. And everything would be different. And um, uh, I ended up going to night school, which is what happens when you're, you know, a jackass. And uh, uh, night school was a pretty cool thing. You know, it, it was hard to do because I worked 40 hours during the day, sometimes a lot more than 40 hours. And uh, then you'd go to school at night. My work day was typically from about, like, if you included driving, from around 5.45 a.m. to after midnight. And I do that you know, all the time for 13 years. But I learned a lot from that. And my time management skills you know, were developed by going to night school. And, and there's a certain discipline that when you live off campus and you have to do all this schooling on your own that, that came from it. So uh, on one hand, you know, if I had gone to a top-end school, you know, how would life have changed? Or, you know, would I even be better? You know, was the hard road perhaps a, a better one for me anyway? So uh, one thing I can change in my life, maybe get good grades in high school, maybe not. Who the hell knows? I don't know what I would do. Hmm? I'd walk I'd walk from that bus slower when my mama's car got stole. Let's fix your bum leg. <laughs> yeah, that probably wouldn't – the bum leg would be fixed. Probably wouldn't have a weight problem. Probably wouldn't be slack as fuck because I wouldn't have a weight problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a big day in your life. Kyle, yeah. one thing you could change? 
You know, when they asked George Bush if he had uh, made any mistakes for his presidency, he's, he couldn't think of any, and I'm going to stick with that. I, I, uh, I, think, I think I've been uh, going pretty well so far. <laughs> things, have, uh, things have been working out pretty nicely uh, on, on the path I've been going down. M modeling yourself after the worst president in modern times? Um, have you, have you uh, watched oh, CNN here lately? we go. No, okay. no, I'm Didn't not going there. So. I'm yeah, just we going by get on, get historians. I was about to say, Obama sucks pretty bad. <laughs> about as bad as it gets. Obama, mm. I, I got to agree, I'm not even a Republican. I'm an independent. And but, Obama is like the worst president we've ever had. He does exactly dick. He is a Woody in high school. That's what he is. <laughs> By the way, by the way, you guys, if you message me with any kind of like political uh, comments on YouTube, I will immediately block you. So if you're looking to get blocked, go ahead. That's what I've been doing every time somebody wants to bring up that socialist faggot. I block you. So, and, you know, you know right socialism now. isn't a bad thing. Have you been watching CNN or socialism? Fox? I don't like socialism. That's that's not how I roll. I just um, don't like the fact Obama accomplishes exactly nothing and goes look, by me, every. Let me just quickly like, throw this out there. Thing. Let me quickly throw this out there, and let me tell you the difference between socialism and democracy. All right, we had that huge stimulus thing, right? That like eight hundred billion dollar bullshit. Mm -hmm. All right, now that was basically let's borrow some money from China and let's let the government decide how how it's best used for us. Instead of doing that, they could have given us a six month six months across the board, no taxes. That way, the people of the United States decide how that how that money could best be uh, spent for them. It would have cost the same amount of money for the, for the government, except it actually would have done something like I don't know, spur our economy on. It's 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 ideas like that 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 will never even like clink in their heads because they think they're so much smarter than the average person. They just want to like look over your shoulder and be like, "No, Tommy, you don't want to buy a new car. You want to donate your money to this." Uh, I, I can't. You want to buy I, this bank or a new car? It, no, I, I don't even want to talk about politics. It, it, it infuriates yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, that's why. I, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of up. Empire burns to the fucking ground. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm kind of up on politics. Like I understand what's going on, but I definitely don't. I try to keep myself as far away from it as possible. I mean, I know that obviously, it, obviously, it affects everything I do. But I mean, it's just. It's just people are sad, man. People get frustrated when they pay attention to that shit all the time. I remember uh, there was this, there was these like uh, these meth heads that were going to try to assassinate Obama, like uh, before he got elected. Why did you have to? Why did you guys have to get high? All right, you got to keep your minds clear when you're on a mission, guys. Oh, yeah, I heard. Weren't they got to like, be John Malkovich, bitches? Exactly. Exactly. That's a perfect example. Why couldn't we have John Malkovich wanting to kill Obama? That should have been done. <laughs> Malkovich is a fucking gangster, all right? You see that movie, you know, with Clint Eastwood and everything? Like, he's got, yeah. like, ten different disguises. He's got wigs and fake noses. He's got different accents. He's got a gun he made in his house. Like, it's great. And, and before I get 15,000 fucking YouTube messages, it's in the line of fire. Clint Eastwood, yeah. look it up. Yep. Great movie. <laughs> It's on Netflix. All right, I'll do my cool story of the week, bro. Wait. Fair enough. So, Kyle, <laughs> the um, yep. I'm looking at this thing. If they had given people tax free for six months, it would have cost about 1.2 billion. And the um, they showed at 800 no, 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 billion. No, 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 no. Yeah, it, no. it would have cost. It would have it, the cost would have been um, almost identical to what the uh, the entire stimulus package ended up being. I remember there was a. Uh, it's not representative. True, it is though. No, because um, a lot of money that went out in the stimulus package gets recollected, right? Like they, they bought investments, not always great investments, but they certainly weren't zero dollar return investments. So, like, you know, I might buy some bad loans. It's a huge collection of loans from a bank, and I'll pay you, let's say, a billion dollars for it and collect six hundred billion or six hundred million on it. Now, that's not a good investment, but it's not the same as spending a billion dollars. If we had just cut off taxes for six months, it would have cost $1.2 billion, and that's about where the story ends. You know, we would have foregone that in collections. But you're looking at, you know, the value of an investment. It's like saying, you know, I bought $500 in stock. I could have, you know, not spent that. Well, yeah, but you have $500 in stock afterwards. 
it's not that you know, the, the money they spent on that wasn't completely tossed away. The, the where way you're equating? No, it. Oh, I think I think it pretty much. Like, I mean, look look where that money was spent. Like, like look where that stimulus money has went. It's went to. It, it, when you break it down and look at, I think it was like three million dollars was spent raking leaves in public forests. And it, like, if you break it as you break it down, like piece by piece, so many millions of that money have just been like on some of the most retarded projects you can imagine. Like I don't, I can't even like. There, there's like ten different ones that I can like think of off the top of my head. One of them, they put like a marble bathroom in a fucking rest stop somewhere in Oklahoma that ended up costing like eighty five thousand dollars. Yeah, just so like, those are called make work projects, and you know yes. they're, they're just a way to you know stimulate the economy, right? They could have done it you know, almost by dropping the money from a helicopter with the same effect. <laughs> you know, just exactly. Now, now there's some money in, in that you know, local economy, and they're good to go. Some of the other projects, though, like you know, upgrading the national electrical grid, doing lots of highway construction. There was a ton of highway construction done with that money. It's not the same as you know dropping money from a helicopter. You get something. It's an infrastructure investment. And uh, if you would just cut taxes for six months, then you wouldn't have gotten the same sort of thing. I'd- oh, I think you get like a huge. I think. Well, I mean, we're still in a recession as is. I think if you, I think if you take uh, sales, uh, sales, um, in income, property tax, all that away for six months. It opens everything up to such a huge degree. Everybody wants to spend money. They're like, all right, we need to buy a car. We got six months here with no fucking taxes. Let's buy a car. Let's yeah. buy a house. Let's <clears throat> buy property. And another thing that I would do is I would, uh, I would, I would institute something that said if you buy one of these, um, what, what's what are they call? There's a there's a there's a name for this. So let me interrupt you. It's true that if there was no taxes at all, it would be a huge economic stimulus, right? People would take that money. And they'd spend it at Walmart, at the Ford dealership, at wherever. But you're also proposing something that was a lot more expensive than the actual stimulus package. Because, again, you're comparing a complete loss of revenue to you know, investments made. A lot of those things they bought, like you know, the, the Trouble Asset Relief Program, the TARP program, they sort of you know, took over assets from the bank that the bank didn't want to own anymore. And granted, the bank didn't want to own them for good reason, but it's not the same That's- as completely tossing away the money. That's the next thing I was going to say. They should take uh, foreclosed homes and they sh- they should uh, they should institute something that says if you sell a if you buy a a a foreclosed home that the bank is currently uh, in possession of from the bank, you you uh, refurbish the home and sell it within you know twelve months. Then the profit then that sale on that sale you pay no taxes. That would that would turn the whole housing market completely around. You'd have so many people wanting to do that to get that tax free money. There's yeah. a ton of things that could be done, but the things that are I, – I hate talking about politics. It makes me so angry. I hate him so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's but, move on to like a happier topic. How about – yeah. Well, my topic I mean, ain't happy. <laughs> well, let's move on. Yeah, I mean I haven't said a word just because I'm not going to start. So, I mean there's <laughs> – I don't know what to say. <laughs> you the man you know, son? I imagine yeah, but I don't wanna... like Emperor Palpatine. All right, I got another question. If you knew the date and time, oh, this one's from Kenzie, baby, little shout out. If you knew the time and date hey. of your death, <laughs> would you tell anyone else or would you just keep it to yourself? Of my own death? Mm-hmm. Oh, everybody, no. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I'd be the same way. I'd probably be like celebrating almost. If somebody Doing fucked with me, I'd be, like, I'd be like, dude, I'm dying in six months and three days. You don't want to fuck with me. Because <laughs> I know I'm not dying in this confrontation. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> that's a good oh, point. Oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't is, that, is that true? Is that yeah, true? That, I, see, mean, that's I your, considered that's your it destined, a willingness yeah. to die when Kyle said it, but when Wing says it, it's it, there's another twist on it. It's a you know I'll be fine, like invincible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Wing's it's, like it's jumping off of like point. buildings and shit. It's at that point where the guy shoots wings in the stomach and cripples him for the next six months and three days. Oh, I know. <laughs> right up in the hospital. That had occurred to me too. <laughs> no, I, I, don't... I just meant that I was, I was going to come back in six months and three days and kill the guy. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I, I think about the emotional well, you state go of down, my family. Brother. I'm dying in six months anyway. I'm, I'm more than happy to spend that in prison after dragging your body until your head comes off on the way to the police station. Oh <laughs> By the way, Kenzie Baby, I'm I, I'm not sure if she's trolling or if that actually is a girl. 
She was there was a there was a thread on Huppet and it was like uh, somebody warned. This is a weird thread. Maybe Jericho made this thread. It was something about YouTube commentators having a drag queen contest and uh, <laughs> who would make a good drag queen. And uh, Kenzie Baby was like, FPS Kyle would win for sure. I think he'd make a really passable chick. And I was like. I was like, all right. I replied back. I'm like, all right, I'm going to take that as a compliment. By the way, if that's you in your profile picture, you also make a really passable chick. <laughs> Kenzie Baby has shown, like, I want to say three different pictures of herself on the forums. And uh, at this point, I'm thinking, Just knock it off. It's a girl. She keeps showing herself as a girl. Uh, we need, like, a live stream is what I think we need. I'm go- No, I need a time stamp. That's is it what I that that's unbelievable what they- that there's girls on the Internet? Attractive ones, yeah. They're, they're <laughs> she attractive? I don't even know who you guys are talking about. No, she's, yeah, yeah, she's, she's pretty. pretty. Yeah, probably. I mean, if she's cute, like, would she? I don't know. Spend her time. Post. Her Here's what I need from you. Here's what I need from you, uh, Kenzie. I need a timestamp picture, which is a uh, you holding a post, a uh, piece of paper that says like FPS Kyle, and then like a heart, and then like the date. Like, that's what I need to confirm that you, in fact, are not trolling us. Thank you. Mm. I, I go, I'm gonna go, also I'm gonna go like this. Why, why, to why does girls have to be at hotmail dot com? <laughs> All right. Well, honestly, why do girls have to be ugly if they're spending their time online? I mean, some people just naturally have a good bone structure. No, they don't. They don't have to be ugly. But I just don't see an attractive young lady posting around on the gaming forum to. I don't know why. Whatever. Because I guess against the normal, but it happens. Yeah, some, some, somebody hit me up with the link to this thing. Let me check this out. Like, look, look for example, yeah, look, at I Reeves. look at I Reeves. She's a pretty good looking girl, and she's a she's an avid gamer. Yeah, she has I mean, four, I'm not saying there. Boots. <laughs> I used to Just play Dungeons and Dragons with girls. Seriously, when in high school, we had some knockout girls come play Dungeons and Dragons with us. Girls that no, normally wouldn't even talk to All us. All right, you school. had me up until that. You had me going with you right up until that point where you had the knockout girls playing D and D with you. That's, <laughs> sorry, I, I, I can't. That's that's. You too can't much. see a girl playing Dungeons and Dragons. You ever been to like a Comic Con or something like that, or like fucking like one of those AMV things where the uh, where they show the music videos against anime and shit. There's some good looking girls in those things. There's such a thing as nerd girls that look good. Yeah, don't, don't get that wrong. That's funny. Me and my brother, um, Eddie Moxie, we, well, you, a, we you should about step up here. Your wife today. was fit in the nerd girl situation. Oh, did you just call my wife a nerd? No, I didn't. Yeah, did. <laughs> so, so are are we considered nerds? Yes, we are. I'm not a nerd. I'm not hey, a nerd. I've got some God, nerd we, tendencies. Hey, hey. Like, like, I can't. Hey. I cannot classify, and I've never once thought of myself How? as. Look here, Kyle can name Babylon 5 characters. He's probably watched Stargate SG-1. He probably knows how to play Dungeons & Dragons to some extent. He None knows of this is true Trek. so far. <laughs> <laughs> He's calling your bluff, Wings. Yeah, I don't know any of that shit you just mentioned. I'm not All right, let me just say this. Stuff. When I, I may have watched one or two episodes of Babylon 5 when I was like 12. All right, like 11 or 12. Um, Stargate SG-1 is like pathetic like i watched one episode of that and it was like terrible the, the kurt uh the kurt russell movie was the best thing like i see that shit on the sci-fi channel the stargate I hate like, Roll Roll right. let's back up every year they got one kyle can probably tell you the weapons damage on everything in modern warfare 2 so What's does that point? classify him as a nerd he might i don't know what, what, I, i'm trying to do myself here I'm trying to do yeah, myself but I can here, also, baby. Like, you know, classify, i've always I classified also nerds as people picture. that look more toward the electronic side of things they use their mind to enjoy themselves other than physical pleasures, like a jock or think, anything like that would like be trying to uh, fuck the hot cheerleader and drink as much beer as possibly the possible human could intake without getting poisoning. I think you identify nerds with your eyes. I don't think it has to do with uh, you know what they do or like their extracurricular activities. I think you can look at somebody and say, "Yep, that guy's a nerd." Yeah, I don't That's even think it goes as far as like visual. I think it's more just how somebody carries themselves. I think you can tell by a commentator, for example, if if they're a nerd or not. You know, like I don't right, think am I a nerd? To see somebody. No, I, I wouldn't consider myself you a nerd. nerd at all. But yeah, like you said, you consider yourself a nerd. Like, I don't know. Yeah, like, it, I I just envision a nerd as somebody that's kind of soft spoken, kind of keeps to themselves, kind of um, I don't know. They're they're not really interested in 
physical interaction with with anything outside of like you said technology and and things like that so um more kind of antisocial, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, like I'm looking at myself, right? On one hand, computer programmer, you know, video game guy. Dirty. Check, check. Yep. On the other hand, you know, you got a fair amount of experience as an MMA fighter. And, uh, yes. Uh, do lots of sp- experience in other sports, too. And uh, back in the day, been known to charm a girl or two. <laughs> so, uh, nerd or not? Yeah, I would def- I think to be a nerd, like, you have to be like, like full on nerd, like I think you have to be all those things. No, I don't think no, you. Pretty much the entire society has took a nerd turn. When people started having a cell phone on their hip and on their face, you know, twenty four hours a day, nerdism just kind of swooped over. <laughs> yeah, that's just my that's opinion. Not, that's not. Yeah, I can't no. stand a fucking cell phone. I want to slap somebody when they're riding in the truck with me and they talk on a cell phone to somebody else. You know, I'm with I'm, you. You don't, see that, you don't see that person, and the first thing you think is nerd. You're just like, dude, I'm pissed off at you because you have a cell phone right now. I don't. I don't classify as people's nerds as normal day routine. I don't go. I don't look at a person. I mean, but hmm, I'm with I you on the phone. If this thing. guy's a nerd. Like if you and no. I were driving to lunch, you know, at work, from work or something, are going to go have lunch, and my phone rings, I'm with you. You know, I might look to see who it is in case it's an emergency, or if it rings twice in a row, pick it up the second time. But uh, for the most part, like, you know, I'm not going to freaking talk on my phone while we're driving together and just sort of leave you alone because I prioritize somebody else. That's that's rude, but it's common. It is common. It pisses me to fuck off. Like, they'll start a conversation up, too. But like, oh, hey, Becky, I did this. Give me that fucking phone. Let's see how it looks does when it's 60 <laughs> miles an hour out of a window. Yeah, man. People don't get – you don't just you know, ditch the one you're with because your phone rang. That's, that's not or somebody text yeah, messaging just... while you're trying to talk to them. Like, they'll text somebody else. I want to slap the shit on the ground? Yeah, I hate cell phones. I think I think we took a step back when they introduced cell phones. Hmm. It, any law they put on cell phone usage in a public place is a justified law. <laughs> so yeah. here, let me, this guy's got well, three questions. Know, and, oh, did you want to keep going on the cell phone topic? Uh, I, I don't know. I was just gonna say I don't think that cell phones are cool with me. They're okay. The thing that gets me is texting. How impersonal that is. I mean, it's just. I hate that more than anything. I mean, if you want to talk about something, you know, give me a call. I'm more than happy to talk to somebody or talk about whatever you want to talk about. But texting paragraphs back and forth between people is just that's what what makes me wings on somebody, I guess, so to say. Makes you wings on somebody. Nice. Yeah, I've been known to have a temper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, we know. What about the the first time that I ever met wings? Oh. Um, I got host in a game, and it was a horrible host. Um, Wings, uh, we we were friends at that point, Xbox Live friends. After that game, removed, done. Wings didn't want anything to do with me. Yeah, and he he, he demanded that he quit the game. He's like, Onslaught, leave the game. I love it. Leave the game it. and take the loss because, you know, you're ruining this game, Onslaught. Get out of here. Go. Onslaught, what is you're wrong with you? You're being too nice there. How dare you was, be in this game? It was really the... It was really the first night I had ever played with Wings, and I got host in this game. It was like, there's, I mean, obviously, there's nothing you can do about controlling who gets host, and I got host, and Wing was like, Onslaught, quit the fuck out. Get get out of here, dude. I don't want to play with you. And then Wings <laughs> and I had like an hour-long conversation earlier talking about, I mean, it was just, I don't know. Wings, I think you changed for the better. I think you're a better I'm person. I've not changed now. for the better. You yeah, said you called have. me on the right night. No, no. You, you know look what's at, happened? Look at your commentaries. Your commentary style's changed, too. I've told you that. No, you just haven't got me on the right night. Like, no. I flipped yeah. on somebody the other night on Battlefield. Yeah, look, was it Ryan Smith? Yeah, it was Ryan Smith. Ryan's oh. like, wing, Ryan was laughing so hard about this. Like, Wing's, like, flipping out. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, part of what made me Onslaught scene is he's entered that protected class, too, right? Like, you know, Wings doesn't flip out on Kyle or me, you know, and uh, you know, Onslaught's headed there as well, I think. But, yeah, that may be it. But, I mean, we, yeah. you were... See, I look at people insignificant until I like them. Because you have to earn my friendship. I'm, I, you have to earn my friendship and respect. I, I've always grown up as respect is something you earn and not given. Like, some people give respect out freely just because they're a human being. No, I think you're I think you're worthless until you give me a reason to make give you respect. I'm the same way in real life. If if I don't, if I don't, if I don't know you... I'll spit on you before I fucking put a fire out. Nice. Yeah, so that might be something you could work on. <laughs> I'm just saying. 
Uh, yeah, so somebody's this, on the side of the road out of gas, like, damn, tough shit. You should have put stopped at the gas station up there. <laughs> so uh, um, this guy has three questions. He's a total jackass. So I'm not going to give him a shout out. But uh, the first one's to me. How do you feel about me and Mr. Cynical sending an army of trolls to your forum on, on HuppetGaming.com? And uh, why did you remove or ban Mr. Cynical version 2? So, first of all, how I feel about the trolls. To me, it, like, I think the phenomenon is similar to people robbing stores. Like, if the guy, like, the guy that owns your local gas station, he, uh, he, he sells you gas and he sells you whatever, Snickers bars and Pepsis. And when people rob them, they think of them as, like, not really people, like just some big business. You know, I'm not stealing from, it's not like I'm robbing a guy's house. I'm only robbing his store. But they don't really get that there's, like, an individual on the other side of that. Or in my case, you know, Jeff and I, two people who are working. We probably put about eight hours every day into this thing. And on weekends, I put about 12 hours a day into it. I'm trying to create something great. I'm trying to do something good for the community, and I'm trying to turn this into something cool. And um, they did the equivalent of sort of running around with sledgehammers and spray paint for their own personal entertainment. And uh, I think they're low lowlifes. And uh, it, it really kind of sucks. So we had to write some software that makes it really easy to ban them and block them and deal with all that. So um, so that's what I think of this guy. He's like, well, I'm just bored. So I decided to go to your site. And he did something called necromancing, which is um, like you quickly po grab every old thread, you know, something that's like two weeks old, and just make a little post, like a bump or an I agree or a smiley face. And now the front page of your forum, the most important one, is filled with dead topics that nobody's talking about anymore. And, uh, or, you know, he'd just write, I like wagons. Like, and if you were to print it out, it'd be like 70 pages because he made his post so big. And he just, <laughs> you know, sort of wrecked stuff on my site for his own personal entertainment. I think he's a lowlife. I don't think he sees it as, like, crushing somebody's dream of something great. I think he's just like, eh, I thought it was entertaining. And I'm surprised that, like, I didn't, it's taking me, I'm slow to realize that the percentage of those lowlifes in, you know, our little world is bigger. Like, I spend a lot of time on Wikipedia, dig.com, reddit.com, and then other forums like mine that supported off-roading as a hobby and woodworking as a hobby. And uh, there weren't people who actively tried to destroy what people were doing there. You know, they don't run around just making things horrible. But in, you know, our little circle here, like the Xbox and PSN and PC community, there are a good chunk of people who just want to make things horrible, you know. Who, yeah, but go ahead. How old is this guy? I mean, I think that's the big question. You mentioned these other forums. I mean, I'm tell. I, I wouldn't think there's like fourteen right. year old, thirteen, twelve year old kids on a, on an off roading forum or a woodworking forum. You know, I mean, the yep. the community that we're in is made up majorly major. I, I can't even talk. <laughs> made up majorly of people in that age range. You know, so I mean, it's. I don't know. I think that's the the biggest. Yeah, I, I think you're right, and that's probably what I failed to consider when, like, the first gamer tag, sharing gamer tags version I made, allowed everyone to edit data, and uh, it was like, hey, if you see someone who's trolling me, then you can just delete that record, and I trust the community. Turns out that trust was massively misplaced, and uh, you know, first people used the legal deletes, then I got rid of that, and they managed to hack it, and I hardened it, and they found another way and another way, and it was it sucked. So, um, uh, you know, now. Uh, we haven't been hacked, so I'm happy about that. If we do, we have backups. But, um, yeah, I'm serving a community that often likes to fight me, and that's uh, something I didn't expect as much, and we just have to build systems and processes that combat that. So what do I think about this guy? I think he's a lowlife. I think he's a street vandal that just does it online, and uh, he's that's why he's banned. He's a real Yeah, yeah. Yep. I, I, hate, I hate those cocksuckers. I, I can't stand those people. Like, I hate trolls in general. Some guy on my video today, like he didn't, he thought he was, he thought he was gonna get me. He, he posted a question like, "All right, first of all, the quality is like perfect on the video, and he, this isn't like one of those issues where the video just had been uploaded." He's like, "Nice quality. Is that an easy cap or a dazzle?" Instantly, I'm like, "Get blocked, troll." Like, I know what you're doing. I yeah. know you're fucking with me. If you're done. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And like, you know, we all have YouTube channels, and we all know. I don't want to complain about how much work it is, right? Because I kind of enjoy it, and, and it's cool. And uh, my users, 99% of them, maybe more than that, are good to me. So, you know, I appreciate the vast majority. But there are people in there who just write, you know, F you, Woody, you know, things about my family or, or whatever. 
And uh, I know I've never done anything to these people. They just get a kick out of being bad people. And, uh, you know, they're out there in, in this community. So, th Which leads into the next one. This question's for Wings. How do you deal with YouTube drama? I'm reading, I'm reading some YouTube drama right now and help it. <laughs> oh, this, apparently Focus. I'm. Oh, this is about this. This falls into the thing. Okay. Was, um, this guy goes. Um, I was a medic in Wings Party, and I revived him in the line of somebody else's sight, and he got killed again. So he kicked me off his friends list and out the game. How do you guys feel about that? That's exactly how I deal with YouTube drama. If you come up to my door with drama, I block your bitch ass all day. <laughs> I don't want to hear none of that. I don't want to hear about how you like me. I don't want to hear about can you get send me a friend request. I don't hear about you how you don't want to like how you don't like that I request people to pay me for friend requests. If you don't have money for me, some kind of constructive criticism that basis <laughs> that basically improves my online gaming or video making ability, I don't care. Don't send me a message. He's like, you better have money in hand. You come and talk <laughs> yeah. to me. Or something nice like, to I say. I, I know yeah. Wings doesn't mind Feel if someone nice. says, you know, hey, man, I had, that was a great tip. I'm, I'm sure you like hearing it. Hell no, I don't. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> no, no. Wings no, is like, no. if, there, if, if there is not a dollar sign in the title of that message, I do not even open it. It's not true, though, because I know Wings, right? I talk to him. And when he sees, like, um, like re Wings' videos have changed lately, if, if you guys that don't sub to him. I told you. That's what I was telling yeah, you earlier. Yeah. So it, if you were to watch a Wings video that was say three months old it would probably be him fussing about people that troll him on his page it would be him fussing about people that play no, the game or whatever if you watch no, one today me, he's probably helping you play better a lot, a lot of this a lot of this comes from i'm trying to become a better player myself you know i will people say you can't have your cake and eat it too i want my cake and i want to eat it as well i want the kd and the win ratio at the same time mm-hmm and most of the time I'm on YouTube, I'm trying to weed out bad players versus the good players because I'm using it as like a farming system. Uh, like I, I got my thoroughbred horses right here, and with a little guidance, I can get a good friends list here. Mm -hmm. But it never works, and I always get, I always end up getting mad to scream at them. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Oh, and in terms of blocking people, like I'll block someone who says something bad, but I'm lucky. Like I don't. As much as I talk about my haters and, and you know how they can frustrate me sometimes, I think I have 70 people blocked, and I have 67,000 subs. So I think most people with channels my size are into the four digits. Oh, and of that 70, I bet 25 of them didn't even say anything to me. It was a community block. So if people don't know what a community block is, what happens is, like, if, if you just say, you know, Wings, you're a camper, he might block you, right? That's that. If you say something remarkable and actually manage to, you know, bug him, then we'll issue a community block. And he'll talk to, you know, Kyle, me, maybe Optic Guys, Hutch, whatever. Like, I'll spread it out. I'll write 25, 30 of the biggest YouTubers oh. <clears throat> and say, this guy talked about my wife. Everybody blocks him. You know, and you don't just un you don't just lose me. You lose Wings. You lose Kyle. You lose Pyro Puncher. You lose Onslaught. You lose T-Mart. You lose Merka. Uh, it's gone. And I don't, I, don't do the, I don't do community block often because generally when yeah. I block somebody, it's over <clears throat> something petty. If you get oh, right. me to community block you, <laughs> if you get me to community block you, you seriously fucked up. Right, I've done it four or five times. That you know, that's not a I've lot. I've done like once. I've yeah. done it once, I think. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, that's kind of when I knew. I think it was Kyle. I think you sent me. That's when I kind of knew I had kind of made it into. I guess I don't even know if I could say this into your little click. I guess, but Kyle had sent me a message saying to block such and such, and I. Yeah, I kind of felt I, good. I, I kind of felt I, special. <laughs> I'd watch out if I, I, I was a Kyle subscriber. He loves his community blocks. Yeah, Kyle. I, I think a lot of them are minor from Kyle. <laughs> I love doing it. I don't yeah. want to take the thunder away from you, but the the, the main reason I contact you is because like I look what I what I do is like I'll look at like who the person is subscribed to, and um and go after those and then like contact everybody they're subscribed to. Yeah, hmm. but just the fact that you know that you sent me the message. I mean, it, it felt good, you know. <laughs> the first yeah. time I community, like the first couple times I community block somebody. I felt like I was doing a favor to that person. Like, you know, oh, this person hurt Kyle. I guess I make a small sacrifice and lose a sub uh, to, you know, in it's because he Kyle's my friend. <clears throat> but uh, now I've changed my mind on that. Now, you know, like if, if Kyle issues a community block, trust me, I don't want that guy anyway. You know, this guy's probably a high level troll and yeah. Kyle's doing me a service. He's helping me get this guy before he turned on me next. 
So, uh, yeah, yeah I was the same way. Whenever I received anything from you, Woody, or that thing from Kyle, I didn't even look at who it was. I didn't try to figure out what was going on. I mean, it was just they were done, you know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let me let me say this. I don't care about my subscribers. I don't care if you want to unsubscribe <laughs> or you get your friends to unsubscribe. Just throw it I out on the care. table, Wings. I don't care I how many subscribers I have. I seriously don't. Because guess what? I'm going to get the same views on my videos every time because my channel is so big that when you pop my shit into a fucking search engine on the fucking YouTube page, I'm going to come up. And, it, and that's just, that's fact. I mean, if you want to unsubscribe, do it. I mean, you're yeah. hurting yourself more than you're hurting me because you can, I, yeah. I found out today that but if you go on YouTube and you type in the letters F and P, my name instantly comes up. Really? Yeah. Is that in Google? The, 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 the auto suggest at the top. If you're looking for anything with wings, it get does. me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to see how long it takes to get Woody's gamer tag. W O is not it. doing it. W O O. Woody Woodpecker is here. Yeah, I saw that. You're not as famous as Woody no, Woodpecker yet. No. But I am more famous than <laughs> FPS Doug, who I was named for. So, yeah, <laughs> you need to Doug. type in Wood, and then I come up in the auto suggest. Yeah, kind of cool. Where I'm trying to get wings. I got wings at Wings So on Google. Uh, so the last question that this jackass asked was Kyle, do you find yourself a god among men? <laughs> Wait, why, are, why, are we an, why are we answering all this guy's questions? It's because <laughs> I... You know, this, like Jedi, this Jedi mind tricks with three X's on his name on this form sucks. That's all, what this guy did this podcast, I, want, I want a negative 100 karma on Jedi mind tricks. I if took you, away you, the you negative find, karma. Oh, why? Oh, I love it. I'll explain it. I want it. to see another donkey's ass or like a fucking donkey. <laughs> the troll I'll time. explain. So what happened is the people who were actually trolls, the people who... You know, reveled or reviled in this, uh, you know, negativeness. Love their negative karma, and it was a goal for them to create as much anger on the forum as they could. And this was like a, a trophy system for them. And the people that had good intentions, but just you know, said something that was unpopular for whatever reason, the karma hurt their feelings. So nothing good was coming out of it. The trolls were loving it, and the good people were hating it. And that's like the well, opposite just, of what I'm going for. Here's what I would do. Mm with the karma if you get negative 15 karma you're you're blocked your username you're is deleted and that's it so like the community IP brings out the trolls themselves the thing is so, i mean like I, I need to look at it but I, I think sometimes people were like single-handedly wrecking karmas you know reloading yeah. the page downvoting multiple times using multiple accounts and uh you know trolls were attacking well-intentioned people uh, oh, okay. I remember this one guy. He posted. He he posted a thread, and, it, and he said, um, he said, I I said in the thread that I liked Commando Pro, and now I'm negative three karma, and he misspelled karma, and I don't know. I'm a grammar Nazi, so I'm like, <laughs> I saw. I'm that. like negative. I'm like, I'm like you also misspelled karma. Now you're negative four. <laughs> somebody comes right behind me. Somebody comes right behind me. And they're like negative five. And then it's like, <laughs> oh and it's, shit. They're just, they're just getting him, and I'm just, I was telling everybody about it. I was laughing my ass off. I'm like, Woody will catch that eventually and take it down. <laughs> uh, oh, that poor guy. I kind of yeah. feel bad for him. You see, this is an example of carbon <laughs> used for evil. You know, Well-intentioned people getting, I, like, <laughs> abused. I love it. Yeah, I was abuser because I was like, I was like, you misspelled karma. Grandma Nazi for life, negative four karma, bitch. I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> um hey i have That's... i have a question can i ask a question please okay? yes, mm -hmm. um earlier wings was saying he would uh he would spit on somebody right didn't know what you said if they were on fire before you'd help them mm -hmm. or yep. you said yeah. you wouldn't give them gas or something what uh if you guys had the money say you're a very rich person would would you give homeless people money not enough money that they could like Live the Hell rest no. of their life, Hell but no. would you Hell put the no. money on the side so of the Kyle, street? So, Kyle, Kyle, this is a hypothetical. Let's pretend that you Very had extra cash. Yeah, but, yeah, for Kyle, this is like true life, right? <laughs> oh God, you guys have got to stop saying stuff like this. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, See, I'm not the one talking about my twenty thousand dollar guns. Oh my God. I yeah, didn't want to say. 
We asked. I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm gonna create right. some fake stats here and say 80 percent of the people are homeless. Got there for a reason. Uh-huh. I'm the same way. I'm right there with you. Even though I'm fairly a, a I'm a generous kind of guy, I can't see myself giving somebody money I mean, to put them. I understand in that. some people might have had like a business deal go wrong and everybody shit mm-hmm. on them and like throw them out in the cold. That happens. <clears throat> But most of those motherfuckers are heroin addicts, cocaine addicts. They, they, they. You, you give them a hundred dollars, they'll steal the wall in your back pocket while you walk away. That's the kind yeah. of people homeless people usually are. Yeah. No, no. Uh, does I would push them into the street and maybe have a tire run their face over, and they be that they should thank me for that. Does anyone here know anybody who's homeless? Like, I've, I've like, I've known, I know, a, I know of a guy. There's a guy who walks around the street right here, and he sits up at the store all the time. He got like three hundred fucking dogs that follow him around. And he's a drug I feel addict. Bad for I don't think he's a drug addict, mm-hmm. but I think he's like. I don't know what he is. I, I seriously don't. I've never bothered to talk to him, like, because he's always mm-hmm. picking up cans and shit, and and he pays like somebody twenty dollars to drive him up to the recycling center to turn them in. And mm-hmm. that's what he does every day. He picks up cans. And every anything on the side of the road, and he goes turns it in for money. So I'd see homeless people in Philly, and uh, some of them just looked broken, like there was nothing wrong with them, and some of them were clearly mentally ill in one way or another. Yeah. And none of them, although on the West Coast I saw more guys who you know, looked like they had the drug habit, but on the East Coast I think of them more as guys who uh, I don't know just didn't figure out how to do well at life. I mean, yeah, yeah I think it's Atlanta. more about. It's, it's, go ahead, Kyle. Oh, in Atlanta, like one place that I would see a lot of, like, like I, I wasn't one to, like walk the streets of Atlanta late at night. I know better than that. So like, but if if you were at a a basketball game or a hockey game, like there's this little caged in area outside of Phillips Arena where uh, you could go outside and smoke, and the hobos knew that's where to go. You you could go and pick up some quick cash because you know, like you got you've got all these people in this one little area, and they've all got you. Know, the, the hobos know we've got money because we just, you know, we just paid for a ticket for a Thrashers game, and we're all up there smoking cigarettes. We gotta have money, so they're always up there like change, change, uh, and I just always wanted to put like like put my cigarette butt in their cup. I can't stand hobos. I can't stand them. Yeah, I, it's just, I mean. Outside of somebody being, like you said, what he mentally ill, I mean, if you see somebody maybe has a limp or something on the corner, I mean, he could he could have a, like a – not an intelligent conversation maybe, but he could have a conversation with you. Mm-hmm. I cannot see giving that guy any of my money. That's only going to encourage what he's doing, and I, I, I don't know. I think people like that, they just right, lack now, motivation maybe to – I take it back. Something. I did give one guy money. Um, I saw a guy on a corner in Athens one time. Like, he was at the corner, like, like as, as I drove by. Like, it wasn't, like, at the corner of the sidewalk. It was, like, on the corner of the road at an intersection. And uh, he had, like, a messed up leg. There was something wrong with his leg. I don't really remember. But uh, I think he was a Vietnam. He was some kind of veteran. He uh, he said something. His signs said somebody was a veteran. And he was he looked all fucked up, and his leg was messed up. So I gave him 50 bucks. But, like, normally I don't give those people money. That guy probably was, like, yeah, fifty bucks. You know how much liquor I could buy with this shit? Hmm. And like, yeah. and like, threw the fake cat cast off and like ran like a flash to the liquor store. <laughs> uh, ran to his. Liquor. You know, if he's a veteran, he would have VA benefits. I. VA. Well, that's, that's I free medical care. Well, I mean, I, I maybe like a chronic in, in, in injury, maybe like a, a de- or maybe like you know something that. It's not exactly like he's got a bullet wound. It's just that he's just got a bad leg now. I don't know. Whatever. I don't want to. I don't want to hate on you hobos that too much because I know there's a lot of you out there listening to our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I thought that was maybe a safe topic. I wasn't going to get any real hate. It was like, like I said in my video the other day. Like, like I think it's pretty safe to make fun of the deaf people because because the deaf people aren't listening. And no, then, I really hate these battlefield forums on Huppet Gaming. These guys are tr- talking trash wins. about me. Focus I've got a better win loss and KD than all you motherfuckers. Fuck y'all. <laughs> wings just pulled. He pulled the rug right out from under you, Kyle. You were on your ass right oh now. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, Kyle. <laughs> wings is like focusing on a forum somewhere. Do you need a hand he up, just, Kyle? He just, he just trolled your topic. He just took <laughs> Absolutely. <it away. laughs> But that's oh, wings. Wings wouldn't be wings. Hey, so I got a question for. The story of the bro. I got it. Oh, wait, let's let's do that instead of the question. Cool story, bro. Hit it, wings. 
I want to tell you about the time I almost died at work. Oh. That's a good well, start. I work, I'm, I'm going to try to do this without breaking confidentiality rules because I had to sign one of those confidentiality agreements where I used to work at. No one's listening. Uh, it's just between us, baby. Yeah, that's fine. Somebody drop, <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody, did somebody drop the... a sandwich in one of those vats of liquid metal? No, no, no. I, is I've this going to be stuff. as gay as the story where you were on your knees at gunpoint with that guy? <laughs> oh, uh, I did get on my back on this story, though. All right, all right, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, oh, I worked, I, I worked in like a like a like a mill factory type situation where we uh we made transformer cores, and um, we had just built a brand new line, and um, uh, and they had redone the whole idea of cleaning inlets. When you when you're basically pouring molten metal into another furnace to basically feed. You know, a machine that that requires metal. I can't really get in detail about it. They, it creates what you call stalactite, and it gets hard and it crusts and it and it basically what you make what you make spouts of on furnaces is, is what you was what you is basically like a mixture of like a it's like a plastic it's like a plastic that hardens up and it allows you to pour metal through it. Well, after time, this deteriorates and it will sometimes it'll slam on stalactite because there's big old hydraulic pistons that pick up the furnace. So that that part I didn't catch. It slams on stalactite. Well, all right. Let me picture it. There's a holding furnace. You know what that would be, right? Like it's a big a, it's kettle. A furnace. Like a yeah, witch. It's a furnace that you that holds metal and keeps heat on it, so it mm-hmm. doesn't solidify into and turn into solid metal. It uh-huh. Keeps it liquid. So let me interrupt well, you. Would you describe this as like a small burning room or like a witch's brew kettle? <laughs> <laughs> What's a furnace? In this case, like a small. What's the size? Uh, how how big is it? Is it like in the end of Terminator? Think about two? think you, you think about a size of an office building. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you That's could cook a two hundred and fifty pound chicken in this thing. Yeah, <laughs> yes, the chicken would die instantly. <laughs> Anything right. that went. Think about Terminator two. Uh huh. And the shit. This is bigger than that. <laughs> All right. So this, but it's it's, it's a fifty ton holding furnace. Oh, yeah, that's big. Okay, okay, okay. So it's a really big room that's just... I want to talk about Terminator 2. It's hell on Earth. All right. (laughs) All right. Well, basically, there's an area where you can open up and pour... You have another furnace that you basically make your your recipe in, Mm -hmm. and you pour it into the holding furnace to be used. Well, when you pour it into the holding furnace, it creates stalactite, which basically metal splashing up on the walls of the inlet, and it creates like a hard metal rocky surface, and... After you after you pour it, it's at its softest point, so you can go and chip it away with like a like an iron bar or anything like that. Well, the new line was completely redesigned from the other the other lines we had, and you had to basically put a steel platform on the front of the melter, and stand on it, and ride out to the inlet. So this is like a permanent little catwalk attached to the front of a burning no, room. No, it, no, it's not a permanent catwalk. <laughs> What's the steel whole platform? Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm imagining that scene from Terminator there. I think that yep. may be where Kyle's going. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> That's what I'm picturing in my head no, right well, now. Well, the steel platform has to be hoisted up by crane with slings and put on the front of the melter. What could go wrong? <laughs> it, it, was a, it was a very – it was a temporary thing, uh-huh. and they didn't, they didn't over-engineer it at all. <laughs> it was like, well, we do this to get by. Yeah. And what you had to do is after it was seated on the front of the melter, you had to, somebody had to climb onto the platform and take the slings off of the crane. Well, what happened is when I got when I I was up there helping them I was up there helping them basically load the holding furnace. I'm I'm doing this real slow because I don't want to give away confidentiality rules and and secrets. So I'm trying to pick my words carefully. That's a slow works for me too. Go on. We're, load, we're loading the holy furnace, and after you're done, I volunteer to help load up the uh, thing so the melter can go out and chip it off. Well, what happens is I get the first set of slings off because there's two set of slings, and they've hooked into four points on the steel beam. Take the first set off, which is on my left side, and, is, and there's a pit. There's a five-story drop under me. That's a lot. So I, I, take the, I take the first set of sling off the hook, the hook and um, I, throw, I throw them down. I go to take the other sling off, and the guy bumps the crane because the crane's remote control, mm-hmm. and he had the crane still on. Like he didn't. He, you're supposed to turn the crane off when somebody when somebody's in a situation where they're in a moving where, where they can be moved. Well, he, 
he hit the up button and it pulled it, the, the steel platform out of its seat. <laughs> so this thing goes from vertical, to, uh, to, to, from horizontal to vertical within an instant. So that makes it and, hard to stand on. And you're on top yeah. of this thing? <laughs> yeah, I'm standing on it at this point. So, uh, so I fall, boom, and I hit, I hit the railing. On, they had like handrails, like you hold on to. Uh-huh. I hit the railing so hard it bends them. These are steel railings now. Boom. Shit. And I'm look. I'm sitting there. My hat falls off. Had a hard hat on. It sit. I'm w- look watching it fall and crack into the pit, because <laughs> there's oh, nothing damn. but like metal that's fell down into the pit. This hardness so was like jagged rocks, just sticking so up. What are your feet on right now? Are you like just <laughs> hanging on the I'm, edge? I'm hanging on the rail. Like there's there's like there's bars, steel bars. Like like you. Have you ever been up on a platform that has handrails? Yeah. Those handrails are what's holding my body. <laughs> There's big whole holes in them. Like my legs are so, hanging through the handrails and all. Yeah, so and your strength is all that's keeping you from falling. No, you no, being the, able to yeah, hold. It's still hooked up to the crane. Oh, I got the, uh, the other set of sling. The other sling is still hooked up to the crane hook. Right, but and your strength is the only thing keeping you from falling. I mean, you're not standing on anything. You're holding on. You're like, holding I fell yourself. Down. Yeah, well, basically, I mean. So did you I'm end up falling the rails, into the pit? and the rails are holding there. I didn't want to fall in the pit. No, I've been a death. No, fall. he'd be dead. <laughs> Would he? Five, That's five the whole story point. into a piece of steel. You know, Mike. <laughs> this is one of the reasons people don't like you. I'm just saying. People, uh, Woody. <laughs> why do people like me? I think. Come no, on. no. There's there's the hordes and no. legions that don't. <laughs> That's true. Dude, I, dude, I have this guy actually. Dude, are and, you picturing uh, it right? Basically, this thing is held up by you know slings. There's six thousand pound slings a piece. Two slings. Hooked to a crane, and it's just dangling on it. Like if I move, the whole platform shakes. So it's uh, each one of them holds six thousand pounds. Yeah. And, so it's a 12, and there's only like one. Of, and there's only one of them left holding you. Yes, and the platform itself probably weighs you know four or five thousand pounds. Oh man. And the, well, the sling has a, like... sling has a cut in it too because it ripped it when it boom when the when this the jar from it. Yeah. So I'm picturing I'm like a swing. Yeah, I'm picturing like a swing with one of the ropes cut. Am I on the right track? Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. And <laughs> and, and that in the swing set you're sitting on weighs four thousand, four or five thousand pounds that could fall on you after you hit the rocks. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're not gonna be alive after that anyway. Yeah, I, yeah. I probably would have died instantly as soon as I hit. So you how did you get out of this mess? Well, it took about three hours because we they were debating. <laughs> Debating. <laughs> Is he really worth this? Is his life worth risking all this? Couldn't no, they, they were debating the best way to do it pit? because they couldn't go over the melter with like um, with like safety ropes because the melter would burn them. It would just destroy them as soon as they went over the top of the melter. It doesn't sound too on... good for you either. Yeah, really. <laughs> so I'm no doctor. I remember the first question they asked me is, could I put on a um, fall gear? I'm like, fuck no, I can't put on fall gear. Anybody that doesn't know, gear? fall gear is full body harness, where you you basically you have strap up on your legs and put it on. I'm hanging over here by a rail, which can come out now. These rails yeah. are able to so pick up and take off and put back on. So ha- one of them's halfway off, and I can feel it sliding under my ass while the platform moves. Um, he's like, "Can you put on fall gear?" No, I can't put on fall gear. <laughs> so it's it's like he- a harness you would wear, like if you were rock climbing or something. Is that kind of what it is? Yeah, but it's designed for falling. Like if you're in like yeah, a jail. Yeah, yeah. Somebody, somebody like would have to throw me a log chain so I could just wrap around my waist. So worst case scenario, when I do fall, the log chain's there. Like I'm gonna need some kind of safety device. Well, well, that's what they was trying to do. They was trying to see if I can get a like a, a fall gear on and hook myself to the crane hook. Oh yeah, I can get it on real fast. You can't, you can't get that on. I had, tr- I'm a big guy. I had trouble putting it on when I what suspended in okay. air against the platform. All right, yeah. fair. But you gotta you gotta pretty much climb into the thing and then strap your legs up. Then you gotta hook it here, hook the belt, hook it on your stomach. Then you gotta hook the lanyard up on your back and then is hook that, the lanyard out of hook. But in that situation, honestly, I think my adrenaline's going so 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 hard and I'm so strong at that point. All uh, I need is something to hold on to. I just need a rope. You know what I was doing? I was holding on to the grate. <laughs> I held, yeah. I remember holding that grate so badly. The next three days, my muscle was just strained. So how did you get it, out of this situation? I, end, I ended, They ended up putting a, la, a lanyard around my waist, and um, 
and my foreman, the foreman of the shift came out, and he got on the platform with me, and we ended up walking off of it. And so basically I had to get up because <laughs> we determined that uh, I hadn't broke my leg or anything because I thought I had sprained my back because I hit it so hard. I ended up walking off of it. Uh, wow. You talking to, you, th- you ever you ever see a grown man cry? That's when you do it. You don't cry when it happens. You cry after it happens. Because <laughs> cause they were telling me to stay calm. I was calm. Like, I didn't want to fuck nothing of this up. All right. So, you know at the end of Terminator 2, when Arnold hops on that truck of liquid nitrogen, whips the wheel to the right, tips it over, and then does that crazy barrel roll. And then Robert Patrick gets completely frozen by the liquid nitrogen. So then Arnold pulls out his, uh, his pistol, and he's like, Asa La Vista, baby, and shoots him and shatters him into a million pieces. My question, at this point in the movie, I'm always thinking, why do you have to be such a badass? Just pick him up. He's frozen solid. Throw him in the liquid shatter steel. Shatter him. You could, well, if you shatter him, he just he's just like going to come back together. But he did shatter him. you got to yeah. pick him up and throw him in the liquid steel. That way you don't get all fucked up in the next scene, and Sarah <laughs> Connor doesn't get that finger through her, through her shoulder. That always bugs me every time I watch it. I'm like, pick him up. I'm pretty sure he didn't know how to kill him when he went into it. And he figured he was done. That's why it shows the scene of the molten metal re uh, basically unfreezing him, which wouldn't yeah. happen. I mean, it, it literally wouldn't happen. Nitrogen is, fr- is so freaking cold. Being around molten metal that far away would not even affect it. And how many how many steel plants like that have molten metal sitting open? The air would cool, would rapidly cool molten metal. The electricity at that place bill would be enormous. It'd be like two, three hundred thousand dollars a month. Yeah, I want to know how many planets have terminators. That's what I want to know. That's true. That that was a made up steel factory, dude. You have to keep you have to keep steel. You have to keep electric current to it. You have to keep water coils running around it, and you never want to get water into steel. If you ever put water into steel, it sinks right to the bottom and it creates what you call steam. And when steam gets in the bottom of molten metal. Bloom! You have an explosion because the, all the pressure just pushes everything upward. I like to melt glass bottles. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want water anywhere near a, a, a melter. You don't. But the way they do it is they put water coils outside the wild, and you have two working liners, and basically you send electricity through water to heat the coils. It's kind of a fucked up system. But it's the best way to do it at this point in time. All right. Because eventually, eventually, if, if somebody gets the melter too hot, it can eat away with the plastic lining and get to those coals and hit the coal and cause an explosion, which usually levels a factory. Like you ever see those holes, hole in the ground factories? Something like that usually happened. Woody, new subject, quick. Have we ever talked about the guy that used um, Call of Duty to coerce kids into sending nude pictures of themselves? What? No. Do we want to talk about that? <laughs> right, is this story about let me? Let me come up with a topic. Uh, no, I'll 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 running, topic. Are we running? <laughs> running? Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the podcast yeah. running a little long. It probably is. Maybe we'll make uh, Mike's topic the last one. So this guy. No, no, no. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to go. I'm good. <laughs> good with yours. It's cool. This guy um, played Call of Duty, and he got 13 and 14-year-olds to send them pictures of their genitals. By saying it was a membership condition of the clan he's starting in World at War. That's awesome. <laughs> it's not awesome at all, Kyle. <laughs> By the way, ladies, I have a clan on uh, Xbox Live. It's FPS. If you would like to be in the FPS clan, I'm going to need some pictures <laughs> myself. You can send those to O space FPS space Kyle space O. And I swear to God, if you send me a picture of your dick, I'll track your IP address. <laughs> you know, yeah. so he got go some new just pictures of for kids Kyle, uh, to get him in the clan. He even got some of the children to do phone sex with him. And uh, <laughs> come on, I, you know it sounds awful, but I will say I bet he held up his end. I bet he, I bet they made it into the clan. <laughs> I bet he had a great. <laughs> <laughs> How can you take me so after you've had phone sex with somebody? Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. There's a better part. There's a better part. When the investigators confronted him, and mind you, he was after they were 13 and 14 year olds, he told the police that he believed the kids were 14 and 15. <laughs> and that was it. And that would make it okay. He couldn't just deny it. How old was he? 
Um, 20. Oh, now, these have awesome. to be little boys. Cause I can't, I, I can probably count on one hand how many times I've run into girls in Call of Duty. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't say boy or girl, but I bet you're right. You know, Call of Duty is not the place to find women or girls. <laughs> You'd be surprised. All right. <laughs> Leave it to <laughs> Kyle, man. If you want to pick up girls on Xbox Live, Left for Dead. I have like oh, three sets yeah. of nudes like on my on my in my message list right now. <laughs> he does too. I'm not even kidding. He's not like, like, because a- after every podcast, I won't even say this, but <laughs> <laughs> sometimes Kyle's not the only guy to see the nudes. You're that throwing he salt in his game, Woody. I know. Yeah, I'm you're putting out some trade would secrets. Never, down. Yeah, I would never show those to anyone. I'm lying about that. <laughs> I've never seen these pictures. Is that the end of the podcast? Oh, yeah, it is. Pink Hill already, episode 15. <laughs> it's in your boy fingers. <laughs> All right. Hey, Jedi Mind Tricks, XXXX. Fuck you.